We have reconstructed 3D models of the bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki to show you what they are like inside and to explain how they work. Because one rightly wonders, but how can such a small object release such a great amount of energy and wield such terrifying destructive force? Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. In this video, we want to talk to you about the principles of its operation from a technical scientific point of view and look at the chemical physical reaction behind this device. Let's start by saying that the core of an atomic bomb is made of uranium-235 and plutonium-239, heavy metals that trigger nuclear fission. The atomic bomb functions precisely as a result of the chain reaction of nuclear fission, the same nuclear fission that occurs in nuclear power plant reactors to produce electricity. Pay attention though, although the physical principle is the same, the bomb and the nuclear power plant obviously work in a very different ways. Nuclear power plants do not explode. Chernobyl did not explode. There was an explosion, but it wasn't a nuclear explosion. That said, to help you understand the underlying technology well, we will take as a reference the devices dropped in 1945 during World War II, namely Little Boy and Fat Man, as the bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are known. The Little Boy bomb in Hiroshima weighed 4,400 kilograms, was 3 meters long and had a diameter of 71 centimeters. Its core was made of 64 kilograms of uranium-235 and it was divided into two blocks, the bullet and the target. The bullet has a hollow cylindrical shape and fits perfectly into the target. When the bomb is triggered, the bullet passes at a very high speed through this tube and when it hits the target, the two bodies combine, creating a critical mass. Critical mass, what on earth is that? Critical mass is essentially the minimum amount of uranium or plutonium required to trigger and sustain the chain reaction, which is essential for the functioning of an atomic bomb. But how does this chain reaction work? When a neutron hits a plutonium or uranium atom that has a mass greater than 230, the atom splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing energy. In turn, the nuclei release neutrons that will collide with other atoms, releasing additional energy and continuing the process exponentially. To ensure that this reaction occurs, the atoms of fissile material must be very close together. Returning to the little boy bomb in Hiroshima, critical mass is generated at the moment in which the bullet and the target meet, initiating the exponential chain reaction. A fun fact, this device has a low efficiency, in fact only 1.5% of its 64 kilos of fissile material undergoes fission. What does this mean? It means that 98.5% doesn't participate in the reaction, but disintegrates and falls back as radioactive material. Let's move on to the other bomb, which worked differently. Fat Man is the code name for the nuclear bomb that exploded over Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. The device weighed 4,670 kilograms, was 3 meters and 30 centimeters long, 1.5 meters wide, and its core consisted of 6.4 kilograms of plutonium-239. Unlike the Little Boy Bullet system, its operation is based on the implosion system. As you can observe, its shape resembles that of an onion. At the center of which there is a plutonium core surrounded by another sphere made of explosive material. When the explosive is detonated, a perfectly symmetrical shock wave is generated which crushes the core into itself, creating a critical mass that initiates the nuclear reaction. The idea that a nuclear reaction could also be artificially produced on a massive scale in the form of a chain reaction was developed in the second half of the 1930s, following the discovery of the neutron. Some of the main research in this field was conducted by Nobel laureate Enrico Fermi and a group of European scientists who sought refuge in the USA due to the anti-Semitic laws. 
These scientists developed this technology in great secrecy on behalf of the American government, which provided virtually unlimited funds to develop this highly destructive technology. We're talking about the famous Manhattan Project. That said, who has more nuclear weapons today? The podium goes to Russia with 5,977 nuclear weapons, followed by the United States, which has an arsenal of 5,428. Then China, France, the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. And Italy? Does it have atomic bombs? No, we do not have atomic bombs, we do not produce them, but there are US nuclear devices in Italy because Italy is part of the NATO nuclear sharing program. As per the Armed Forces website, the nuclear weapons in Italy can reportedly be found in Aviano, Friuli Venezia Giulia, and the Gedi base in the Brescia province. Dear viewers, thank you very much for following us. We obviously hope that these damn weapons will never be used. If you have any ideas or suggestions related to this topic, please make sure you let us know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Ciao!